So in the previous video, when I stripped all the old um, sort of canvas lining off, uh, I mentioned that the metal plate that was covering this, I didn't really know what it was for, and I thought perhaps it had been done um, as a later addition. It turns out that it was actually a radio grounding plate, um, and that's thanks to this viewer here. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do then to remove the actual wooden part of the roof is to remove the four bolts uh, that you can see on screen here. So let's get that done. Wow, that's a lot of rust. The other thing to be mindful is when you're removing these is um, to remove these washers that are sort of embedded um, into the wood. Okay, so the next step then is pretty simple. So the rest of the roof then is held in just by nails um, into the wood underneath. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pry up all these nails, which are pretty much all rusted solid anyway. Uh, and then it's a matter of just prying up the panels. And once we remove then just the sheets of um, roofing, then we'll work along the um, sort of more complex edges. Okay, so it's taken over three weeks, um, but we're finally at the stage now where the roof is actually completely removed. So as you can see, there's quite a bit of devastation left behind from the, uh, the remnants, but now we are completely roof free. So going up top. So this is what it looks like up top. So the basic structure then, um, you've got these wooden support beams. Uh, which are actually pretty sound. You've also got these like metal supports um, that go along on the sort of, um, just on one side. And then the rest of it is just, you know, quite straightforward joinery. Uh, the walls here is, a, I don't know the actual name of it, but it's like a cardboard sheet, essentially. Um, the light's quite a strange one, so it kind of just hangs on its own, a bit strange. Um, so after a lot of, well, plying, crowbarring, drilling, all sorts, um, I've discovered that what I actually thought was nails are actually slotted screws, so you can see there. Um, so along the outside, this is all nails, but then all along the inside, um, they're all slotted screws. Now the problem is, like you can see here, where they've rusted through, well, a slotted screw is pretty bad for grip anyway, but if the head snaps off, you are absolutely screwed, pardon the pun, because um, it just snaps off and then it gets stuck in the plywood and you have to crowbar up, but we also don't want to damage this too much. So yeah. Not great. So basically the next step then is all these remaining um, sort of the heads of the slotted screws. Uh, I'm actually going to use a little like Dremel and just Dremel them all off um, rather than pluck them out because I don't want to leave big holes in the wood. So after I've done that, I'll put the new wood on top. I'll use a couple of nails and I mean a couple in strategic places, mainly along the central beams and the outside to keep it in place. Doesn't need to be anything too major. There's grooves here and it, uh, it's going to have the EDPM on it anyway. Then after that, I can install the EDPM on, cut out all the various holes, um, and we should be good to go. Now, I say we should be good to go. Um, if you're watching this video, obviously you know by this point it's been over uh, six weeks since I uploaded the last video, um, and however long it takes me now to get the rest of the roof done. But we're getting there slowly but surely. I've now installed the new OSB roof. Um, so a couple of things to note. So I've actually done it a different way than the, than the original. For better or for worse, I'll leave up to you. So what I've got here is there's four pieces uh, like the original. Um, so you can see the seam coming down the middle here. Uh, and that goes to this centre point just there. And then for the front piece where um, you've got a, a curve in it, uh, or not a curve, but a, a diagonal line, that's separated again into two pieces. So the original, uh, roofing system or the roofing system that I pulled off had two small bits back here and then the larger bits at the front. Now the issue with the way I've done it here um, is that towards this central line here where the big piece meets a little bit there isn't a support there which means um, that it is weakened in that area however no one's going to stand on this roof bar me um, and I know where the weak spot is so it's not really too much of a problem for me. Now the reason I did it was, was pure simplicity. Um, to get these curves and things, because like I say, the, the wood, you know, I haven't replaced the outside frame. 
so it's bent, it's misshapen, there's rotten bits I've had to chop out. So it's not a straight line. So it involved me hoisting these bits of wood up, running a ruler along it, running a line, cutting it, bringing it back, trimming it, cutting it, and it, you know, several times. And if I'd had to do a massive piece like this, lifting it up on top, it would have just taken me far too long. And all I've simply done then is I've tacked it into place with several nails. The next bit I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna actually use some screws um, to screw in through the OSB and into the supports underneath. Now I'm not gonna use too many, it's just to add a little bit of rigidity. Um, and I'm going to use uh, I'm going to use two different types of screws. So I'm going to use these smaller um, Phillips head screws. I don't know if you can see them, um, but they're they're quite short. They're about 15, 16 mil. And then I've got these longer wood screws here, two, 2.2 centimeters in in length. Now again, I'm not going to apply too many because it's an absolute nightmare getting the screws out. And of course, I'm going to use Phillips head rather than slotted screw because that's a nightmare. Now the one thing to to point out, which some of you may have spotted is if you come along you'll see this isn't quite lined up now it does fit inside however what that is due to is the fact that even though i've pulled out nails and screws and i've grinded it down with a grinder catching fire several times to this roof um there are still you know there's still screws and nails that i can't get out for instance all these nails along here um from the previous covering uh, they're not going to come out um so along the side here this was the piece that uh, was rotten so what I had my uh, carpenter friend do is he came over one night um, and he's basically, he's chiseled out all the rotten pieces um, bar sort of one or two spots that we're going to treat. And he's made it so that rather than trying to insert like a strange shape, we're pretty much just going to um, insert one piece along here and then he's just angled these edges here. So we stick that in, we can nail it in and then that's that job done. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add some screws, add further rigidity and then we'll move on uh, to the next phase. Okay, so before we... Uh reinstall the roof covering what i'm going to do from the inside now before i put the roof covering on is to uh, use a drill and a hacksaw to make some holes in the new roof so we've got to make a, a rectangle shaped hole here for the uh, rope for the bell and then there's a circle hole here uh, where the spotlight handle comes through so you can adjust it so i'll drill some pilot holes use a hacksaw to get all that out smooth it out and then we'll go back on top Okay, so for some reason, the uh, video and audio of me installing the EDPM rubber roofing uh, onto the main bit of the OSB has been corrupted. Uh, it's a really straightforward process, so just type into YouTube or Google EDPM installation. Uh, it's really simple, so I'll go over now the, the finer details of installing this roof on the Green Goddess. To get more good luck with this um, video, for some reason, the audio for this part of the video just decided to not record. Basically, all I'm saying is that... Uh, now that the main sheet of it um, has been covered and we've left it to sit for about an hour, I'm going to start going around the edges and using the contact adhesive for the edges. So the contact adhesive is basically there to give you that extra bit of protection right at the edges to stop anything starting to peel back and then getting um, water ingressed that way. So I'm starting with the front, so I just peel back uh, the material slightly and I'll cover then that in the uh, contact adhesive. Um, it's incredibly strong stuff. When I open this tin, uh, it was quite overwhelming. It's got a very strong sort of nail varnish or um, isopropyl smell. So I would recommend you do it in an outside area or somewhere large indoors um, where it's vented uh, or just put a mask on as well. And again, be careful because if you get this stuff on you, it's, it's not a good time. So I'm just going to give it a quick mix to make sure it's all mixed together um, and then just start painting it on. So this is what it looks like when it's been completely painted on. Um, you can see the clear green outline. Also make sure that you cover the front of the um, frame as well. So not just the um, OSB, but the, the frame bit is going to wrap around onto and get nailed into. So then all I've done is basically I've gone around the front, the left hand side and the back side um, with this contact adhesive and I've uh, pushed it all down and smoothed it out. So this is what it looks like. Uh, when it's been smoothed out you can see I've put in some nails as well to hold it in place I've done that on the front left side and um, right side uh, back side sorry leaving the right side uh, to replace that piece of wood and there you can just see the left side it's the same sort of sketch and you can just see on the floor I've cut off the excess material so this is what it looks like then and you can see I've started to put the trim on so um, starting with the rear I'm using new screws for this um, you'll see now and later that I've put the trim on in slightly different positions, uh, especially at the front and the sides. You'll see I've actually put it higher than the original, so it does mean there is a gap now where you'll see um, where it originally was, and you'll see some of the um, side panel wood. Um, it's done for 
uh, one main reason, and that is because I can't strip down all the sides as I discussed earlier, I can't re-screw into those same holes um, because obviously a lot of those screws have been rusted and the, the, you know, the wood's not great in those areas. So I've moved it slightly up, so I'm, I'm screwing into fresh wood as it be, um, or virgin wood, um, so it gives it a lot better grip. Um, all it means is I'll just have to use a uh, waterproof epoxy or um, waterproof paint just on the outside, just on that small bit of wood. But because there's the overhang of the frame, uh, it's not really at too much risk of weather. So all I did then is I trimmed off the excess material underneath the um, sort of metal bevelin or whatever you want to call it. And you can just see here where I've cut out the, the holes, as I said earlier, for the rectangle and um, bell housing and the searchlight. Okay, so now that most of the roof is done, what I'm going to do before I install the right hand side um, bit of rotten wood is I'm going to use a wire brush um, just from being here. I'm going to rub down all the component parts on top of the roof, so for the, uh, the bell housing that holds the rope, stops water ingress, um, underneath the blue lights, and then the actual bell housing itself. So I'm going to rub it back down to bare metal, and then I'm going to use some hammerite. Uh, I'm going to go for dark green, and originally that's not the original colour. Um, and I'm going to respray it then, just so it gives it a nice bit of finish uh, before I reinstall it back on the roof. Okay, so what I've also been doing then is we need to replace these um, the ladder supports that go on the roof. As you can see from particularly this one, they're pretty much rotten all the way through. Um, so I've just measured them out on some other bits of wood here and pre-drilled the holes. They are slightly larger, um, but it doesn't actually make a difference as long as the uh, alignment's correct. And then the only other thing that I've done is just use a chisel just on the edges. Um, it's a pretty rough job, um, but just to take off some of the sharpness of the corners to better match the uh, originals here. Um, so these need to be sanded down and then they'll be painted um, obviously with wood paint, um, probably epoxy based, and then they can be reinstalled as well. So with uh, some assistance, these have now been uh, completely stripped back down to the, the bare metal. Um, pretty much all the rust is now off it. Um, so the next step then is to paint it with a hammerite and then we'll leave that to dry. Okay, so you will have noticed uh, in the last video that I forgot about the spotlight. So whilst the first coat of the original parts were drying, I scraped the searchlight back to bare metal and resprayed that then with the same hammerite stuff. Um, and I've also come in between, I've given it a second coat. So that's just the front panel there. I just used masking tape to um, cover up the plexiglass that we installed in a previous video. Um, so now everything's had two coats. So the next phase then is to reinstall this back on top of the uh, green goddess. Um, so we'll get to that in a second. Now this is the um, pieces of wood to replace the uh, ladder supports for the roof. As you can see, it's quite, uh, it's a lot brighter than the original. It's also a lot um, brighter than the green on there. Uh, I'm not too bothered because you're not actually going to be able to see this at all, um, realistically, unless you're on top of the roof. So one thing I am going to do before I reinstall these parts um, is obviously we've, we're going to drill this into the um, plywood roof, same with the, the bolts as well. Um, so along all the points where the screws are going to be going through the roof of material and also anywhere where I want to create a seal. I'm going to use, um, I've used this before, we use this in the um, spotlight to the plexiglass, check out that video if you haven't seen it. But I'm just going to use some sealant to create a bit of a, a flange seal um, and then also around any screws or nuts and bolts to so just try and keep this as watertight as possible. Okay, so that is the roof now done. So as you can see from the top there, I've removed the bracket for the blue light, um, purely because I think it makes more sense to just seal it straight to the roof. Um, it gives a better seal, it means I can do better cable management, um, and it's one less part to worry about. Um, obviously I have already resprayed it, but what I'll do is I'll swap it um, with the blue light that's still on the stand at the back that I haven't um, adjusted yet. Um, so I know it sits a little bit lower, um, but overall I'm really happy with the look of it. The spotlight and the bell have come out really nicely. It doesn't really show on camera too well, but it's so much brighter now um, and better looking. So the only thing left then is just this side piece here. Um, so obviously I'll put the new wood in, um, nail it in, and then finish the trim that's just coming along there. But as you can see from the inside, I've got the, uh, the ladder mount all uh, bolted in, the bell's back in, the spotlight's back in, just got to put the handle back on, and then the blue light uh, that now just comes straight through the roof and bolts in uh, just with a single bolt goes through the centre of it 
um, and that's it. Okay guys, so stay tuned and next time what we'll be doing is we'll be uh, installing the air horn next to the bell there. So I'll go through all of that with you in the next video. Until then, thanks very much for watching. See you later.